Roleplay Recon does not own any parts of the movies we recon, nor are we associated with the people who make them. Also, as a general warning, I'm probably going to do a cuss and talk about many mature adult things. The soundtrack for this series features music by the Pine Hill Haints. Check them out anywhere you get music online. Show you I so would Though I am the law There are no others under tow As far as I know I am the very lowest low And I have farther still to go Yeah, that low We open on an ancient, decaying hut on the top of a hill. The hut is surrounded by skeletal trees and dry tufts of grass. It is night, but the scene is brightly lit due to the full kissing moon. We see the back of a figure, silhouetted by the moonlight, facing away and toward the road. In the distance, three men on three horses gallop away, their cowboy hats disappearing down the hill. Finally, the swaggering, belt-hitching blowhards are gone. Big coffin hunters, eh? <laughs> Nothing big about them, I'd warrant. The figure cackles while turning toward the light. She is old, older perhaps than life itself, but with unending stubborn vitality. One of her eyes looks white and dead, but perhaps sees more than we can guess. We follow her gaze down to the box in her hands. As her eyes fall on the crude eye engraved into the wooden box, they begin to twinkle. Aye, but they ain't completely useless for men, are they? Leaving me with this marvel, and rightly so. She waves a bony hand over the lid of the box, and it clicks open as she pulls out a smooth, crystal sphere the size and color of the flesh of a grapefruit. The pink from the orb glows dangerously on her face as she holds it up to the moonlight. My beauty! The camera zooms in on Rhea's bad eye, and we can see a reflection of the rose-colored ball. In the reflection, we see three riders. However, their silhouettes are smaller than the large riders we saw leaving her a hut. Rhea gasps. Gunslingers? Nay, just boys. Who? She is interrupted by a girl singing. She scowls and puts the sphere back in its box as we see a girl singing and jogging up the hill. Hiss, little Susie is early. She'll pay for this, aye. It's hardly hard to take a stand unless you're the low. And I am the low. Do not deserve to grin a glow. So don't forgive the choice I chose. I am the low. The scene changes abruptly to early that morning in a far off place. You three are standing next to your horses in a line. In front of you stands Stephen DeShane, Roland's father and gunslinger. So let's get to know you all. Who are your characters? Who would like to go first? My character's name is Alain Johns. I am standing next to my horse, Buckskin, and uh, he looks he looks worried, like he always does. Why does he look worried? He's a big worrier, which every every friend group needs, I think, <laughs> and is in no way my role in my friend groups. 
<laughs> Alan, Alan, what is your archetype? Uh, a gunslinger apprentice. How did you become a gunslinger's apprentice? I think a lot of him is he's he's kind of more of an academic, but he liked the idea of like. Uh, like journeying out into the world and like solving its problems, I think, and like mm-hmm. being, being like a mediator. Um, mm-hmm. I think he's probably pretty good at that. Nice, nice. And uh, as a gunslinger apprentice, what is your twist? What makes you interesting and unique? I have the touch. Nice. And what does that mean? I don't have the power. Um, <laughs> yeah. I. Uh, like that's it's your, a, that's it's your last a, one, by the way. Oh no, never again. Um, it, it like to put a not so romantic spin on it. I'm basically psychic. Um, I I don't I don't have like kinetic powers. Um, but I I, ha- I have a lot. I'm like hyper aware of of things. Um, both nice. like physical and mental, and maybe Very emotional. Cool. I don't know. Very cool. Uh, Alan, what is your belief? What is your core belief? Um, I'm, I'm, so this, this mission that we're sending, uh, being sent on, um, mm-hmm. maybe seems kind of mundane, mm-hmm. um, that, and, and, uh, maybe there's some background radiation here of like, we're just being sent off to keep like Roland safe. Mm-hmm. Um, and what do you believe? but I think it's important. Like maybe everyone else here, I don't know how everyone else here feels like, but I think it's important, man. Like Roland's dad sent us to do this, and I'm to count horses, and I'm gonna count horses. What I'm hearing is that you have, um, you believe that like everything is for a, a purpose. I like that. Maybe everything is for a purpose. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So even like you, you find purpose in the mundane, you believe that everything, regardless of how. Even like bookkeeping is like, yeah, that's that's an important thing. Okay, cool. And what is your goal? Your goal. Um, I want to like like accomplish this mission. I want to. I always want to accomplish the task in front of me. Why like, is that important to you as a person? Um, I think a lot of that is just like his his personality. Uh, he's just like I think, and maybe part of it is like the touch. It just makes him like a hyper focused person. Okay. Um, and I think maybe that becomes like. Maybe kind of part of his, uh, this like neuroticism a little bit too is like part of that is because he's always worried about being, but like, always he's always worried about the possibility of failure, and so since he's so like he, he he's trying to turn this like immense fear of failure into maybe a, a virtue of like like al- like always accomplish what you what you've been at, what you've been tasked with doing, like everything is a quest. All right, Alan. What is your issue? Do you know what? I had a different issue down here on the on this uh, sheet, but now that you've had me talk through it, am I allowed to change what I have here? Absolutely. Yeah, I I'm gonna go with that like immense fear of failure thing. And do you have any very strong bonds? Strong bonds are three and up. Well, uh, I have a very strong bond with my good pal Roland. Mm-hmm. Where does that come from? Uh, I, I admire him a lot. Why? He's just so cool, Jensie. <laughs> <laughs> he is very cool. I mean, look at him. He's so Jeez. cool, Jensie. And, like, I would very much like to hitch my wagon up to him, if you know what I mean. Aww. <laughs> so you have a little crush on him? Oh, yeah. Actually, I kind of just meant, like, I was going to ride his coattails to success. But, yeah, there's that, too. <laughs> oh, my brain is just like <laughs> my my romance gay brain is just like crushes everywhere. Well, we we're I think we're trying to lean into romance a little in this one, right? Like yeah, let's come back. It's just Twilight all over again. Here we go. You know me. You know yeah. me. <laughs> How I do. Okay. All right. I, cool. I, so I, admiration plus crush. I'll tell you who I don't have a crush on, but I still think it's, he's kind of a cool guy. Uh huh. Is is Cuthbert? Nice. It's, it's, Cuthbert, all all good. Are we are we yep. saying your last name is all good? Okay. 
all good. It's all good, bro. It's all good, bro. Nice. <laughs> also, I um, promise that this like psychological breakdown is important. I'm not just doing this for no reason. Nice. Is there anything else about Alin that you want to tell us? Um, no, not right now. I think you'll the things will come in, you know, naturally as we go along. Nice. Nice. Does he have any like physical things that are important to him? If you're trying to imagine some something, uh, ima imagine like kind of a stouter person, like um, kind of a huskier guy, but he has broad shoulders. Thank you so much, Alin. Who wants to tell me about their character next? On the other side of the three gentlemen is a tall, thin, darkly handsome fellow mm -hmm. named Cuthbert Allgood. <laughs> He's looking rather bored off into the distance and absentmindedly stroking a, a rook skull in his hand. Okay, cool. Where did that rook skull come from? This rook skull... I got, it was the first thing I killed with my slingshot. Oh, whoa. Did you feel bad? Did you do it on purpose? I did a little bit. I did do it on purpose, and I felt mm -hmm. immediately remorseful. Oh, good. Aww. You're not a serial killer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but then I kept its skull as my best friend. Nice. Does the skull have a name? The skull does have a name. What is it? It's Cuthbert. <laughs> <laughs> what <a> <laughs> Thank you. This is oh. Cuthbert's Cuthbert. Beautiful. I love that so much. Thank you. Um so tall, tall, dark, and handsome there, playing with his rook skull standing next to his horse. And what is your horse's name? My horse's name is Glue Boy. Because I think it's immensely funny. <laughs> that is immensely funny. Very cool. All right, Cuthbert, uh, <laughs> what is your archetype? My archetype is Gunslinger Apprentice. And how did you become a Gunslinger's Apprentice? I became a Gunslinger's Apprentice because it's sort of in my family's lineage. My father was a Gunslinger. His father was a Gunslinger. All the way back to Arthur D. Eld. Oh, very cool. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you are, you're descended from Arthur of Eld? That's very cool. That's what they tell me. Very cool. B by the way, people listening, in the Dark Tower, Arthur Eld is basically King Arthur. Like, please con please continue. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you. Elaine. <laughs> it's, it's Elaine. Yeah, sorry, it... If if you listen to our first if if you listen to episode zero, um, we are saying names differently now. I'm gonna go ahead and address that because there was there's just like debate on how to how how to pronounce Cuthbert and Alin. So we decided. To I go was with coerced, one specific... audience. I was coerced into this. <laughs> he was. He was. So we decided to go with one specific um, audiobook reader who is. Ben slash Rev, please help. Should have written that down, huh? I should have. Frank Muller, no, or I can't it. remember who the other one is. That's it. Yeah. So we decided to go with his pronunciation um, because one of there there are two people who read this this audiobook and one of them pronounces it differently than the other one. But we decided to go with Cuthbert and Alin. All right, cool beans, Cuthbert. Uh, what is your twist? What makes you interesting? My twist is that I'm a free-spirited jokester. Uh, typically, gunslingers tend to be the stoic, very down-to-earth people, and I am probably the very opposite of that. Nice. Where does that stem from? Have you just always been that way? I mean, probably, yeah. I mean, probably from 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 birth. I just like if I'm gonna be able to rebel in one way from my destiny, it's probably gonna be this way. Nice, I love that. I love that. And what do you believe 
What is your belief? I believe that the world is one big joke that only I seem to get. So what's your goal based on your belief? Based on my belief, seeing as they might not see the world as a joke, my goal is to protect my friends to the best of my abilities. Because while the whole world is a joke, it's bleak and all this, there's something worth holding on to. Oh, and it's your friends. Do your friends make you happy? I love that. And while we're talking about friends, do you have any very strong bonds? I have a very strong bond of three points or more with mm -hmm. Roland of Eld. Nice. Roland to Shin. <laughs> yes, Roland to Shin, whatever. Where did that bond come from? It came from us being diaper buddies. <laughs> nice. I think I so think we just... told you that you weren't allowed to say that anymore. Yeah, please don't Google that. Yeah, don't don't do Wait, it. Wait, does something nope. bad come up when you Google diaper buddies? I'm doing it right why now. Don't, why don't you Google I'm... that and find out? He just told me not to Google it. Well, there is an Urban Dictionary. Uh, I'm not going to read it, obviously, but... Uh, oh, no, actually, it. this just says friends you know from your diaper days. Alex, everything oh. you have said is perfectly innocent. Even the images for this are perfectly innocent. Cool beans. Like I would do anything else. Except for one obvious Sonic the Hedgehog art. <laughs> no. All right, Cuthbert, what is your big issue? What keeps getting in the way of your goals? My big issue of my particular goal is these darn knuckleheads keep getting into trouble, especially my diaper buddy, Roland. Oh, that turkey. How dare he? Just a, just a, just a big old rebel. Perfect. Thank you so much. Is there uh, something else you want to tell us, Cuthbert, about your character? No. Okay. <laughs> Thank <Pass>. you. <laughs> All right, the last one is for Roland. Roland, will you uh, describe your character physically for us, please? Yeah, so I am playing Roland Deshane. Uh He is tall for his age with long, dark hair, uh, very pale skin, and sharp, clear blue eyes. Mm -hmm. Very nice, thank you. Oh, um, you mentioned age. While we're at it, Alain, how old are you? Fifteen. I think I'm a Cuthbert? little older than everyone. Mm -hmm. 87. I don't think that's right. Or 14. Which, okay, whichever 14. comes first. 14. I think 14 comes <laughs> first. And Roland? Okay. 14 as well. 14 as well. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. And uh, Roland, you're standing next to your horse too? Yeah, my horse, Rusher. And Roland, what is your archetype? Uh, my archetype is the gunslinger. Very nice. And how did you become a gunslinger when the rest of your friends are just gunslingers apprentices? Uh, I passed the trial. Uh, there is a man named Court who trains us to be gunslingers, uh, and you have to have a, a trial against him. Uh, and I was able to challenge him, and I passed, and so I became a full a gunslinger. Nice. Very cool. Um, what is your twist? Uh, my twist is that I am the youngest of my kind. Um, my father before me was the youngest gunslinger to ever pass the trial, uh, and I passed it two years before he did. Oh, wow. Take That's that, very Dad. Impressive. Yeah, right. Did you... Um, can you tell us... I would like to hear more about your history, Roland. Um, can you tell us why it is that you passed it so much earlier than even the youngest gunslinger? Yeah, so uh, I essentially was goaded into taking it early. Uh, I discovered kind of by accident uh, that my mother was having an affair with my father's um, kind of courtroom magician, his advisor. Um, and so I charged down and demanded uh, to, to face the trial of the gunslinger so that I could uh, face Martin, uh, the man who, who was with my mother. Uh, and I was actually able to succeed uh, by using uh, my hawk as a weapon. You get to choose your weapon. Uh, and I used a hawk that I had been training for a very long time. 
Um, and so I was kind of goaded into it, uh, but it, it did not work out the way that Martin wanted it to. He, he expected that I would fail and be sent west, and uh, I was successful. Very nice. Very nice. Very cool, Roland. So um, what happened to your hawk? What was your hawk's name? Uh, my hawk was David, and he died a gunslinger. Uh, he died during the combat, um, really kind of saving me. Um, I I used him as a weapon. I I you know released him at court, uh, and then when court was able to get rid of David uh, by hitting himself, <laughs> the the hawk was on his face, and he started to beat himself uh, in the face with it with his his stick to get the bird off. Uh, and then when court kind of leapt upon me, I was able to reach out a hand and grab David and throw him uh, into court's face again, uh, where he just dug his claws in and and helped me out a great deal. I would not have survived without the sacrifice of David. Oh, I love so much that, Roland, that you really appreciated your animal friend. That's very cool. So um, as the youngest gunslinger who has ever been, what is your belief? Uh, my belief is that all can yet be turned right again. Uh, the world is starting to fall apart, and I think it can be fixed. And I don't mean like the world is falling apart, like, oh, things are real crappy. But like time is starting to become weird, and distances are no longer quite accurate, nor are directions all the time. The world is 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 changing in a big way, and hmm. I think that it can be fixed. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, um, based on that belief, how? What is your goal? How do you plan on fixing the world? Boy, I don't know. Um, my goal is to restore the power of the white over the red, um, and that's in this world what they call uh, basically good over evil. Um, and I, I think it's connected somehow to the dark tower, but I don't quite understand how. Yeah. Yet. That makes sense. I mean, you're pretty young. So the Dark Tower, can you tell us a little bit more about that? I guess you've heard a little bit about that, right, Roland? Yeah, so it's, you know, it's kind of a a fable, a fairy tale that some people believe in, some people don't. And it is kind of the center of reality. It is it is the nexus of all worlds. Um, and so I um, and so I kind of believe that all of all of the problems, if I can find that, I might be able to fix them to see what's wrong at the nexus of reality, and it might fix our world. Wow, that's awesome. That seems like a pretty big, lofty goal. So in trying... Yeah, especially for a 14-year-old. Yeah, for sure. Bless. <laughs> so in trying to restore the white over the red, what are your issues? Uh, I am haunted by the shadow of my father. Um, you know, he was the youngest gunslinger before me. He is essentially the king of the area we come from. He is also the leader of the gunslinger. So there are enormous shoes to fill. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the weight of his name and, and bearing his last name uh, weighs on me greatly. Yeah, I bet it does. And Roland, do you have any strong bonds? I do. I have a strong bond with Bert, uh, mm -hmm. with Cuthbert or Bert, as I call him sometimes, uh, because, you know, we grew up together doing everything together. Diaper buddies. Uh, diaper <laughs> buddies. <laughs> I, I cringed internally when I said that because I can see it on a t-shirt or something now. <laughs> oh, it's going to be. Oh, my God. Uh, what if you are our first, like, merch merch outside of, like, Jean Jeanette's, <laughs> like, logo tee? Just diaper buddies. Yep. <laughs> diaper buddies That's how life. you know. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, do you do you have like is there a is there a name that you call your listeners? Because if so, there is now. <laughs> <laughs> diaper Ret buddies. Well, it's Ret it's Ret cronies, but yeah, it's Ret, cronies. Ret cronies. Diaper buddies is so good. All right, perfect, awesome. Well, I am so excited. I love all. Oh, I'm so sorry. Before we move on, Roland, is there anything else about your character that you want to tell us? I can't really think of anything off the top of my head. You know, I, I have a set of um, of guns, which is a, a big deal. They are actual gunslinger guns, and they are the ones that my father wielded. Um, I do not yet have his guns. Uh, I would not get those until he were to, to step down or give them to me. Um, and to kind of connect what was being said earlier about uh, Arthur, um, part of the lore of this world is that 
Stephen Deshane's guns are forged from the metal of Excalibur. So those guns are made from Excalibur. That is really cool. So are you also descended from Arthur of Eld then? Yeah, so yeah, so I am from the line of Eld, and so I am a, a blood descendant of of Arthur Eld, as they call him in this world. So we're nice. related by diaper buddies. Am I the only nerd here not related to King Arthur? Yes. <laughs> but that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm but a poor wayfaring stranger while traveling through this world But there's no sickness, tall, nor danger in that bright home to which I go. As you three stand there next to your horses, uh, Glue Boy, Buckskin, and Rusher, Stephen Deshan, who is the king and head gunslinger and father of Roland, stands in front of you. Today is the day, boys. You three are going to set off on your adventure. And it is very important that you take this as seriously as possible. Because this is a very serious mission that you three are being sent on. I know that you may think that this is some kind of punishment but the truth is, is that we need you boys safe. And we need to make sure that you are in as safe a place as we can. And Hanbury is it. It's to the east. It's untouched by John Farson and his men. You'll be safe there. And I, I know that you want to be here because of the fighting. That hopefully never comes, but we all know will. But you three are the ones who are going to move on and uphold the gunslinger title. Before you go, it's important that we think about what it is that you need to do there. Last time we talked, you were supposed to be picking your own names. Cuthbert, you are going to be from right here in Gilead. People are going to look at you as if you are some kind of mythical celebrity. But you're a rancher's son. You are not a gunslinger or a gunslinger's apprentice. And what name are you carrying with you, Cuthbert? I was thinking... Parson. That is an excellent name. Parson right. McGillicuddy. <laughs> no! <laughs> All right, Cuthbert Parson. Cuthbert Parson. Gotcha. Go forth and do not forget the face of your father. Elaine, you and Roland are going to say that you are from a little town outside of Gilead called Hemp Hill. Elaine, what name do you take with you? I'm Elaine Stockworth. Go forth and do not forget the face of your father. Oh, by the way, he looks like like he's sweating and he's like trying to stand at like full attention and looks Aww. like just absolutely terrified. Bless. <laughs> to, to be in front of the key to be in front of like Stephen DeShane. Mm. You know, I just realized. I'm sorry. What? I'm sorry to like interrupt the narrative, but like no, you're doing this great. is this is like the exact opening to Final Fantasy 15, if anyone's ever played that. Like, I, j I just realized that. Like, they, they're even, like, sending Noctis off on, like, some, like, bullshit thing that he doesn't want to go do. Um, and, and, like, the king knows that it's because things are about to get bad. You hear that, Square Enix? We're calling you out. Um, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Everyone's ripping off the Dark Tower these days. No one's talking about it. 
Yeah, right. The Mandalorian. <laughs> Mandalorian, looking at you. <laughs> looking at you. His name is Din. <laughs> right. All right. Anyway, um, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, Stephen slowly and solemnly McGilly turns Cutting. toward. No. <laughs> He turns toward you, Roland. Roland. What is the name you have chosen? Silvertide. At at this, Cuthbert chuckles. And then Elaine, Elaine can't help but also chuckle because Cuthbert did. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen glances to the left and right. Of Roland. I admit it's no McGillicuddy. The, the two points <laughs> beside him. And then he nods his head. <laughs> Roland Silvertide. <laughs> and he gives him he gives a little chuckle himself and a little grin. Very good. I have given you papers. I have sent ahead to let them know that you are coming. You'll be safe here. I expect you to spend at least three months there. I know that's a long time. It could be longer, though, depending on what happens here. And I need to trust each of you, he says, and he glances over at Cuthbert and Elaine to make sure that you are all playing your part correctly and doing your best and being on your best behavior while you are in Hambry. Is that clear? I, I, sure, yeah, yeah. Roland nods. The people at Hambry are not going to believe that you're just sent there to count livestock and resources. Which is what you will be doing. And I expect you to send back actual reports of the resources that you count. But they're not going to buy that. Instead, let them believe, if they will, that you are being sent there as punishment for being drunkenly disorderly teens. Behaving badly. Make up some story of whatever silliness you got into that your rancher father sent you away for. When you get there, you are to speak to Pat Delgado. He is a personal friend of mine, and I know him to be a very good man. Is there anything that any of you wish to say before you go? I think that Roland stands there just thin-lipped because... He has already had this conversation, not in front of his friends, but he has tried to have this conversation with his father. And he's not going to speak again because it seems pointless to try to have a conversation that he knows he can't win. And so he just shakes his head no. Steven pretends not to notice. Alan squeaks. We'll take care of him, sir. Sai, I should say Sai. We'll take care of him, Sai. Please, Alain, make sure that you do. <laughs> Alain sweats. It's <laughs> a great stage direction. <laughs> I could sweat on cue, guys. <laughs> Very I'm nice. I'm a great actor. And he looks over at Cuthbert and raises an eyebrow. Cuthbert smirks at him and says, Well, if anyone's going to get in trouble... It's going to be your son, but uh, I'll be there to get him out. Excellent. I know you will. He looks one last time at Roland. Please. And he, he says this very pointedly at Roland, um, specifically, although he addresses the group. Please stay safe. Send word back as often as you can. And don't forget what you are there for. You got it, boss. And then he stands aside. Cuthbert mounts up on his horse. Same. Elaine bows so deep he almost falls over. 
and then <laughs> it also mounts up on his horse. Uh, Cuthbert looks over to Roland, bows deeply, and says, After you, Silver Toes. I shake my head and I gig rush her forward. I know dark clouds will gather around me. I know the way is rough and steep. But golden fields lie out before me with the redeemed forever. are riding off to the east. It is early in the morning and you are on your horses headed toward Hambry. Hambry is a pretty good distance away. You're not going to get there in one day, but um, you have just left from the edge of um, the central city of Gilead. Um, and there is not much between there and Hambry. What do you guys do? Alain sings softly to himself. Hey, Jude. Don't make it bad. Take a sad song and make it better. Cuthbert, do you hear that awful racket? Remember to let her into your house. Yeah, I hear it too. It, it sounds like one of your kin then drowning in a pond. Start of cow manure. Ignoring Cuthbert. I think I reach back uh, underneath one of the saddle blankets and pull it up and, and pull out a small cage uh, that has half a dozen homing pigeons in it. Uh, and I just kind of, I'm checking them over as we're on this long straight path to make sure that the, the birds are doing okay so that we can send word. <laughs> I'm rolling, not you two. Aren't we a little uh, close to home for you getting uh, homesick there, Roland? If you sharpened your skills as much as your tongue, I wouldn't be nearly as worried as where we're going. Well, fret not, friend. Where we're going is nothing but horses and more horses, as far as I can count. There may be oil, too. If God wills it. <laughs> See, that's funny because the phrase is usually water, if God wills it. Elaine explains this joke out loud. <laughs> and, then he, and then he looks at Cuthbert hoping he'll laugh. Cuthbert does not laugh. <laughs> but Cuthbert does, <laughs> uproariously. Cuthbert, Cuthbert is off his gourd, <laughs> which, I, which I keep the skull in. Is mm -hmm. just a gourd? We were worried that if we changed our first names that it would be confusing for the audience. And like, thank you, Alex, for finding a whole <laughs> new way to make this very confusing. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I can change I can change my rook skull's name to McGillicuddy, is that <laughs> no, it is it is the funniest thing of all time, so I don't want you to change it. <laughs> Yeah, in the story, it's called uh, The Lookout, but Cuthbert's way better. Why not? All right. So you three have been riding um, for about half a day now. The sun is high in the sky. And so far, it has just been pastures upon pastures. Um, the livestock are thinning out at this point, though, from Gilead. Um, you all are mostly just in empty, limitless plains at this point. Um, is there anything specific that you all do? I'd probably just ride, speaking softly to, uh, to Cuthbert. Nothing about anything important, just describing the cactuses as we drive by. That one's green. That one's green, too. That one's a little brown. That one's green. All right. Does anyone have any skills in awareness? Oh, so much. I have the touch. Skill in awareness to roll me 2d6. 
Oh, now I don't literally have a thing called awareness. Oh. <laughs> All right, so um, just roll. I kind then. of I I kind of replaced it with the touch, which is like supernaturally aware. Why don't you go ahead and roll me a couple d6 as well then? But I don't add my attributes to it. If you have, if you are using the touch in place of awareness, then yes, go ahead, add that. Yeah. Well, I had a friggin' amazing roll. <laughs> oh yeah. I got a fifteen, which I wasn't even uh, was aware was possible in this kind of game. <laughs> Whoa, that is. Very high. I rolled a 10 on the face of the dice. I got plus two points just because I've got... A, um, It's my, like, highest skill. Uh -huh. And then I get a plus one for mind, and I get a plus weird with the touch. Whoa. Wild. So, <laughs> ri ridiculous what just happened here. <laughs> that is, like, as good as you can get, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> if I rolled two sixes, it would have been better, but I, I could only have gotten two points better. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Roll it. Uh, nine. Nine. Still very good. Still yeah, very ni very nine's good. an amazing roll. <laughs> yeah, like, that's... <laughs> <laughs> All right. I did not so, want to um... burn my luck on this perception check. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> good job, though. All right, uh, Roland in a land... You two sense that um, that now that you are really leaving in world proper, you're really leaving Gilead properly. Um, you notice that the horses start acting a little bit funny. Specifically, Alain, um, you also notice that the carrier pigeons are a little nervous. There's something up. I don't. Hey, Roland, Roland. I've, I'm, I'm feeling something. Yeah, and I think like at Rusher, kind of moving strange and seeing a Len perk up. Uh, Roland sits up a little straighter and starts eyeing the horizon to their to their left and right. All right, in eyeing the horizon, you notice something interesting happening and it's almost imperceptible if you weren't looking for it you wouldn't see it so as Cuthbert has been counting and 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 keeping track of the the cacti along the road due east um you kind of look up Roland and you see that the clouds are also just kind of following you all like they're on this journey with you and maybe you see there aren't really lines of cacti or brush or anything but it's almost a pattern it's almost that they are showing you the way and if you really look you might see some insects that are also going in the same direction that you're going I nod. All right. So you three continue riding. The further east you go, you start to see a change in, in the environment. Instead of just regular plains, you start to see hills and you start to see more trees. And pretty soon you have come upon not a very dense forest, but certainly some wooded area. And it is beginning to be pretty dark. Roland, Roland, should we make camp? How far do I think at this point we have to go still before we would reach? Um, I, I know that it'll be you know, another couple days before we would get to Pat Delgado's house. Roland, you know that normally it would be about a three-day ride. But you also know that sometimes 
time and distance, like you said earlier, are just kind of weird. They're just kind of off. Sometimes they just don't make a lot of sense. And you know that these kinds of woods don't usually start happening until about half a day's ride outside of Hambry. Yeah, I think I, I mentioned that. These woods shouldn't be here yet, right? I mean, according to the map, this doesn't start until real close to Hambury. I Something feels off, Roland. I got three, four alarm bells going off in my head. So, do you feel better about pushing through, or do you want to try to sleep through those alarm bells? I, I do like sleeping. <laughs> you know, you know me. I don't know. I think they're just going to get worse if as we go along and uh, but we we I mean, we'll we'll keep watch, right? We'll we'll take shifts like we always do. It it'll be it'll be any sweating very hard. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's just woods and fog. We can we can take a nap here, <laughs> surely. Yeah, I look back at Bert. Any gut instinct? My gut tells me I'm hungry, and I'd like to make a fire and some food. You heard the mandolin. Let's make camp. Let's see. You There is a, a still a row. There's still a path throughout the trees, um, but it is very narrow at this point. Um the woods still aren't very thick, but you probably do need to find a clearing nearby if you want to make camp. Yeah, um, can I use survival to try to look around and, and find a good place to, to camp where it seems like if it rains, it won't you know flood us out or anything? Yes, absolutely. So you have a skill in survival, and um, I'm not going to make you roll for that because there's not really a trigger um, for survival. So explain to me how you go about finding finding a good place to camp. Yeah, I think I uh, look around for signs of um, like animal scat or uh, water runoff to see like, well, what's there's, oh, there's animals that pass through here a lot or uh, the water seems to run down here when it rains. Uh, and then find a spot that seems to be open enough where we could all uh, lay out our, our sacks. All right, good deal. So, Roland, you do that great. You find a, a really nice clearing. It seems like it's not too far off from the main road where you'll be able to find it very easily uh, when you set off again. Um, but it does still feel like it's, it's, it's pretty secluded and safe from the main road. Um, so you guys go ahead and start making camp. Uh, who wants to gather the firewood? Who wants to um, start setting up the perimeter? Not it for the firewood. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go get the firewood. All right. Yes. Good deal. Yeah, and I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll write a perimeter uh, to check around and see if, if there's anything that we missed. All right, good deal. So, uh, Alain, while Cuthbert is off trying to find some firewood, and uh, Roland has just rode off on has just ridden off on Rusher to scout the perimeter. What are you doing? Let's make some beans. On I'm what? I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a bean on. A bean on I've what? Got, I've gone to get the wood for the fire. You have nothing to burn beans on. I'm getting the beans out then. Just let me have okay. a lot of bean prep. Yeah. A lot of bean prep going on. <laughs> a lot of bean, lot of bean prep. So <laughs> I gotta have water. I get some water. All right, so Len, you you go to get some water for the bean prep. Good deal. <laughs> All right. Um, let's start with let's start with Cuthbert. I love uh, how Cuthbert. the word beans will just like set you off. Like <laughs> I just everyone loves beans. Why not? It's a good word. <laughs> Uh, Cuthbert, how's, uh, how's finding wood? Well, I imagine we're in or near a forest, so I expect wood is plentiful. Yep, it's pretty much everywhere. You're doing a good job. Good job, Cuthbert. Alan, uh, where's the water at? How'd you find the water? 
I don't know. Could I have a dousing rod? Is that a thing? That's really not for finding a pond, pretty, is it? Forget it. Pr pretty sure we probably brought canteens with us. I gotta find... I don't want to use our rations if I can help it, though. Um, Alan, pick up a stick and roll me a couple of d6s. You know, I tried to take it back, but you didn't let me, huh? Okay. <laughs> well, I, I got a five. Even... I rolled a five. Um, you... I do have an investigate. <laughs> I do have an investigate skill. That's not really got, a search, though. Do you have a weird water okay. connection? Can you use your your plus one weird? <laughs> yeah. Can I can I please like use the touch to uh f talk to the little algae in the water, please? No, that's not. Okay, so no, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, even even I don't allow firm that. but fair. The the weird doesn't the weird doesn't help you out in this situation. You you pick up your dowsing rod, you start following it, and then you just start it. You just kind of start spinning in a circle. Five is less than a. Six, so um, that's bad. <laughs> so you, yeah, yeah, it is is bad. You decide that um, not only has your dowsing rod not led you to water, but you have no idea where it has led you, and you're starting to feel a little lostish. Hmm. Hey, hey, guys. Mar Marco? I'm going to say that Cuthbert has made his way back to camp now since it was so very easy for him to find wood. He is the only one at camp. Everyone else has gone. Cuthbert, how good is your hearing? I imagine it's like anybody else's. Average. 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 Average ears. Okay. Not too big, not too small. All right. The lobes connect at the uh, at the bottoms. Oh, okay. So they're not yeah. they're not disconnected. Your they're lobes. not detached. No. Yeah. I don't think that that really has anything to do with how well you can hear, but it's a... no, it doesn't. Uh, Cuthbert, would you be able to hear a land like shouting thirty yards away in the woods? I, I bet I would. Yeah, I bet you would, 30, too. 30 yards is not that far. No, it's not at all. All right. Uh, <laughs> Come on. You hear, you hear a land shouting about 30, <laughs> 30 yards away. Roland! Bert! I'm lost! I want to take out my slingshot. Okay. <laughs> Can I make out if he's holding his, his stick in in his hand? Based on your hearing, no. He's behind some <laughs> trees. Like it's not that far away, oh, but there are tree. trees in the way, so and you cannot and see it's him. Dark. <laughs> and it's dark. I, I probably have a light I, source with me. I have me. average hearing, but I can hear that that man thirty yards away is holding a stick. <laughs> right. I don't I, think that works. <laughs> I, you, I didn't I, know it was dark. I was wondering if I could see him. I probably no, have some kind of light okay. source with me. I surely wouldn't have just gone into the woods in the dark. That is Cuthbert's. Uh, Cuthbert, sorry. Uh, weird skill, though he does have uh, stick sense. Yeah. Stick, sense. stick sense. No, sorry. Uh, no, you cannot tell if he has a stick in his hand. You can only I, tell I if it's up there, butter. <laughs> I want to try to to make my way uh, toward Alin. Alin. Okay. Alin. I'm not gonna have you uh, roll for it. It's stealthily as possible. Oh, okay. Stealth. I don't. I don't want him to. To notice I am there. <laughs> okay, roll for it. Do you have anything to add to that? I don't. You know what? Um, your belief that the world is a joke and <laughs> you're the only one who gets it, I'm going to let you add a plus one to stealth because this is a joke. Yes, it is. That is an eight. Oh yeah, yeah. You're pr you're pretty stealthy. You you find him pretty well. Good, good. He doesn't know you're there. I want to get right up behind him, and I'm I'm gonna wait for him to call my name if he does. Bert. What? Ah! <laughs> I. Oh, oh. 
You're lucky I didn't bring my carver out here with me. I would have put it between your eyes. I don't think you could see my eyes in this. You didn't even bring a light source out here with you. I did too. It's right here in my hands. It's a little That's lantern. A stick. It's a little it's lantern. A stick. I wouldn't have. I'm. I'm a gunslinger apprentice. I wouldn't have walked into dark woods without a light source. That's ridiculous. It would make no sense in the narrative. Why aren't you setting up camp? What are you doing? I'm getting here? water. Water's over the the opposite direction. Oh, you know where the water is. Yeah, I found it while I was getting sticks. I will allow well, this. Well, that's that's good. Please show me where it is. No, and okay. I leave him in the woods. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, he has I left mean, you. He can follow me. Sure. <laughs> Really? Because I'm the one. I'm the one with the lantern. But okay. <laughs> I found you with that one. You followed mine. Yeah, I followed your voice. Well, g good. Good for me. I'm going there to see my mother. I'm going there no more to. Jordan, I'm only going over home. Hey, it's Ben. I hope you are enjoying the series so far, even though we've just got started. Um, Dark Tower is a passion project by Gen Z for sure, and I'm I'm also feeling pretty passionate and also maybe collapsing under uh, the weight of its uh, literary importance. Maybe not literary importance, but, you know, certainly important to a lot of people. Um, one of those people is Rev, our guest and star for this series. Our guest star, if you will. Uh, please check out his absolutely brilliant podcast, The Crit Show. Um, it's a combination of, like, a long-running, multi-season epic where the players play fictionalized versions of themselves in a campaign uh, monster of the week. And then it sometimes also switches it up and does short series, kind of like ours, where they try out different RPGs, which are usually other Powered by the Apocalypse games. Um, although there's a few other gems in there. Uh, Rev is the GM most of the time and is also an NPC sometimes, which is wild, especially when he makes fun of himself by giving him NPC bad decision syndrome. Um, we also do some streams, particularly a new venture called Omniverse Chronicles, which has a bunch of guest GMs running uh, original campaigns. The current one is called I Hunt, uh, which has the tagline, do you remember that cartoon from when you were a kid? It remembers you. Also, thank you very much to the Pine Hill Haints. Uh, they're on Spotify and Bandcamp and lots of other places. They describe themselves as Alabama ghost music, which is my jam because I'm from Alabama and I'm a ghost. Uh, also, thank you to some people for talking about us or to us on Twitter. Uh, Cody Thompson, Roast Chili, my buds uh, Havard Hagenhogan and Sketchmazoid, the creative team behind the webcomic Grapple Seed. Uh, Role-playing and role-playing, and the second role-playing is like R-O-L-L -L playing. It's 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 clever. Um, which I, I like because they're another like RR podcast. Uh, and the leader of them is uh, the guy from the Tuba Wizard meme, where the guy is wearing all the tuba bells in the band room. It's very funny. Um, also, Eric Boucher, I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, our friend Amy Kim, our guest from our last series on Dungeons & Dragons. And uh, someone on Twitter called That Guy. We also, we have a Patreon. Um, every month, uh, any donation level, $1 and up, uh, gets access to some blooper deleted scenes reels that we call bloops. And something called randos, which is special things that we record uh, only for patrons. Um, and they, they are... Wildly different. Uh, one time we did um, a completely improv version of A Christmas Carol. Uh, one time we did a Don't Laugh Challenge. Uh, this one coming up, uh, Alex created a bunch of new swears, and we try to decide what those swears mean. So that'll be fun. Um, 
And if we get 25 active patrons, we'll do a series retconning a Star Wars movie. Not decided which one yet. There's kind of a lot of polarizing opinions on that, which is sort of why we're postponing it. But if you'd like to see us do it, the minute we get 25 active patrons, we will start planning it. Um, we also have a Discord. I never talk about this in the breaks, but uh, we have a Discord that you can get in on. Um, we have a lot of fun there. We got a lot of fun guys there, uh, a lot of fun gals there, a lot of, and a lot of people otherwise and in between. Um, you can find a link to that, like on most of our social media. I think we have link trees on those. Um, also, I want to talk about Nerdsmith, which we're a part of. It's a network that we're a part of. We're a part of something bigger than ourselves. Uh, they have lots of podcasts and streams. Uh, Mostly TTRPG, actual play related, um, like Shenanigans and Discover RPG. They're not all actual plays, though. They are pretty much exclusively TTRPG related, except for like maybe Monster Crush, which talks about the uh, the perils and boons of dating mon different monsters. But um, there's a Discover RPG, for instance, uh, is like a homebrew uh, tutorial along <laughs> where like people can like get in on it. Um, and then Shenanigans is just a fun uh, RPG stream, TTRPG stream with an original uh, world. Um, our next episode will be on March 24th, uh, and I hope I see you again then. Thank you for listening. is riding Rusher around the perimeter. Roland, have you seen anything interesting? Uh, I don't think so. Just really the element of that this shouldn't be here is so fascinating. Uh, so I'm, I'm riding much slower than I normally would to ride a perimeter because I'm looking at the, the trees and like the flowers and stuff um, just to kind of confirm that like, yeah, this is the stuff that should be growing, you know, two days from here. Roland, uh, which direction are you going? Are you going right now? Are you going like toward Hanbury or? Yeah. So I would start out on the path and head down in the direction that I think Hanbury is just to see if there's any sign of it this close. Okay. So you, uh, you start riding and the trees are still there. It's still not a very, um, dense wood but it is starting to there are starting to be fewer and fewer trees to your right you start to see lots and lots of horses in the distance um and it's and it's kind of like it's kind of like um you know down the hill so in a in a different plane than what you're on Does it look like the, um, you know, Hambry has a large stock of horses? Does it seem like the area where, where they would keep those? It does and it doesn't. So from what you know, Roland, about Hambry is that it is um, predominantly ranchers and they do uh, usually have a, a fair amount of livestock. However, the number of horses that you're looking at right now seems like a lot. It seems like a lot down there. And it seems like so far down the hill that that maybe they're kind of out of the way. It doesn't look like a normal rancher's property down there. And I think just out of habit, I, I say to Rusher, that seems like way more horses than should be down there, doesn't it? He doesn't respond. <laughs> <laughs> he does not respond. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Jinzy. <laughs> <laughs> but... Maybe his ear flakes a little bit. He knows you're talking to him. He likes it when you yeah. talk to him. You guys are buds. 
up ahead in the distance while you are um, kind of in thought and, and talking to your good friend Rusher and, and riding rather slowly, slower than you normally would in this situation, you see um, you see the outline of a person and it is dark. It is the mm, it is certainly the dead of night at this point, but there is a full moon overhead. So through the trees, through the gaps in the trees, you can see fairly well. And there is uh, the shape of a person running along the the side of the road. Oh, yeah, then I will ride towards them. Okay. Um, so you you come upon this person and you see that it is... A very tall uh, young woman. She doesn't seem to notice you at first. She seems to be pretty lost in her own thoughts. Excuse me, ma'am? Uh, when you say this, uh, she she gets very startled. She stops uh, right in her tracks and looks around at you with big white eyes. She does not respond. Um, now that you are closer, you can see her better. She is um, very tall for her age, but it looks like she's about your age, maybe a little older. Um, so she is a teenager. She has long hair that's been braided, and she's wearing baggy men's rancher clothes. So a, a baggy white um, shirt and, uh, like, khaki pants. Uh, I, I put both my hands kind of in the air. Sorry, I didn't mean to, to startle you. I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't hear you approach. Who are you? Uh, uh, my name is Roland Silvertide. I'm on my way to Hambry. Is this, is this the way to Hambry? Uh, yeah, we're pretty near close Hambry here. How where are you from? Close would you say we are? Well, if you're going to Hambry proper, a uh, couple hours on horseback, probably. You're right at the edge. I think I instinctively just kind of turn back over my shoulder and, and look up at the moon and and these trees and stuff. Uh Thank you. I, I, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm from, uh, I'm from Inworld. I, I come from Hemp Hill. I was, I was sent here, uh, to, to meet, uh, Pat Delgado. Oh, she says, and she looks away from you. She doesn't say anything else. She doesn't move. Do you, do you happen to know, um, is his house this direction? Yes, his house is this direction. I'm sorry, what did you have? What business do you have with... And she hesitates a little bit. Um, Pat Delgado. Oh, as I said, ma'am, we were sent in from, or out rather, from Inworld uh, to, to count livestock and uh, a couple other things and i i believe that um he is the the head of the uh, rangers association mm. and um you can see in the the moonlight that she is looking you over trying to tell if you are telling the truth by the way um why don't you roll a contested roll for me roll a couple of d6 for Bluff slash deceive. Do you have anything in that? I sure don't. Okay. So this would be mind, I assume. Uh, it's a soul skill. Oh, okay. So <laughs> I believe it's actually soul. Yeah. <laughs> Three. <laughs> Well, she turns out she actually also rolled a three. Oofa, she rolled a one and two. Um, <laughs> Just two fools well, not uh, knowing anything. <laughs> all right. So she, um, 
<laughs> she kind of lifts her, her eyebrow a little bit and cocks her head. She could kind of tell that maybe you're not telling the whole truth, but she doesn't suspect anything really bad is going on. Um, but she just kind of uh, nods her head at you and says, well, if you're looking for Hambry and the Ranchers Association, you'll find it this way. And then she starts walking along the road. Would you mind, um, would, would you like an escort back to town? It's it's very dark and very late. I'm sorry, you don't think that I can handle myself out here? What no. would I have to be afraid of? No, no, I, not at all. Just, um, it would, it would make, uh, it would make Rusher feel better. And I, I pat the horse. He gets very concerned oh. about, uh, about people traveling on their own. Nice. Oh. <laughs> All right there, Aladdin. Rusher is very kind and very handsome, if I do say so myself. But let him know that it's okay. I can make my way just fine. Thank you. Um, I didn't, I didn't catch your name. <laughs> That's because I didn't give it to you. Uh, it's Susan. Susan. Susan Delgado. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are, are you related to Pat? I am, actually. I'm his only child. Oh, I'm so sorry. And I actually take a moment to get down off of Rusher. I, I don't approach, but like I get onto to her level. I must sound ridiculous talking about trying to find your father. And do you know where your father's house is? And uh, obviously you do. Right. <laughs> no, you're, you're fine. Um, she is a little bit surprised to see that you are just ever so slightly shorter than she is. Uh, you look so much taller on your horse. Yes, he does add a good four feet. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, it was nice to meet you, um, Mr. Silvertide, was it? Yes, Mr. Uh, Mr. Silvertide. Mr. That's not quite right, but my father's Mr. Silvertide. Oh. <laughs> yeah, look at that girl down there, like some wild angel. have been uh, going in that direction for a while and the, the the trees have really really started to go off and, and thin out and you see something really interesting to the right of you it looks like giant machines and Roland you know that machines are kind of weird in in this age uh most of the machines that you know of or have heard of are relics of a time before a time existed but it looks like some of these giant machines are are still doing something and you see a sign that says uh sit go that's the second interesting thing i've seen here tonight what are all those machines doing Um, it's the, you know, oil rigs, the pumping up oil. I don't really know what they're for. No one really does. They just, they kind of give me the creeps and she shudders a little bit. On my way in, before I ran into you, I, I saw a, a drop off the side of the road that seems like it had dozens of horses, way more than what I thought we'd find here. She 
starts walking a little slower and looks over at you suspiciously. And she says, "Where have you not been told of of our horses? It's it's what we're most proud of." Yes, yeah, of course. But I mean, how many horses did it seem like were out there? Like hundreds, or oh yeah, yeah. hundreds for sure. Um, yeah, of course. I I came here expecting to count horses, but there were literally hundreds on that drop. She laughs it off. She says, no, I'm sorry. It, it's dark out here. And you're being silly. There aren't hundreds of horses over there. No, I I promise you. Would you would you like to take a look? I'm, I'm a professional, professional counter. counter. <laughs> um, well, one, two, three. A bean <laughs> counter, if you will. Uh, maybe... Some other time. Listen, um, Roland, thank you for walking with me. I've had kind of a weird night tonight, too, and I feel really weird. Normally, I feel okay being out here by myself, but anyway, I really appreciate your company. Yeah, of course. Um, Please let your father know to expect us in the morning. We've made camp a little distance back and we'll stay the night there and then make our way into town in the morning. Oh, um, uh, yeah, sure. Um, you should probably talk to the, the mayor. Oh, the mayor. Roland, I have to go. Uh, you can't come with me any more past here and... Um, when you do make it to town, you're probably going to see the mayor and his cronies. You don't know me. We never met, okay? Uh, all, all, all right. Is, I know that sounds silly. Is everything all right? I don't think it matters if everything's all right, but just know if we meet again... If you see me at the mayor's welcoming of you, you don't know me, okay? As you wish. Thank you. And she leans over and gives you the, like the tiniest little peck on the mouth before running away. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will... Uh... I, I, I like to imagine... Cuthbert's just like lives rent free in, in in Roland's head and like in his head he actually he hears Bert go, nice. <laughs> Listen, I'm not all about this life of a bunch of people in their twenties saying nice to a couple of fourteen year olds kissing. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I I don't know, I'm just proud of the little guy. I don't know. <laughs> Old West is a different All world, right. I guess. <laughs> yes. I guess so. All right, Roland, as you... um, Bold of you to assume you... we're 20s. <laughs> hey, I'm still in my 20s for the next oh, seven like, days. Like day and a half. <laughs> it's, it's close. Because we've discovered It'll that be... three of us have very close birthdays. That's yeah, fine. you're all... Yes. Well, I'm even not that far away from you guys, but yeah. Uh, anyway, I don't want to talk about how yeah. I'm 30 soon. So, um, not that there's anything wrong with being 30, dear listener. Anyway, um, Roland, as you, as you stand and look after Susan jogging away in the distance, you start to hear something kind of weird from your left. Yeah, I'll, I'll turn that direction in. Okay, so you turn you turn toward your left, and you see that there's kind of a, a canyon over there, which isn't weird. You've seen canyons before, but it sounds like eerie music or strange voices or just some kind of weird noises coming from that canyon. Uh, yeah, I will walk over that direction and, and kind of peer down in to see what's making that noise. Okay, so you're still like a little far off. 
Um, it would take you a while to get to the edge of it, but the closer that you walk, the the more you do hear something kind of strange coming from over there. Have you ever experienced something like this or heard of something like this? Yeah. Um, like what is what is it? What does it sound like? I guess is my question. It sounds like. It sounds like if you took and like um oh what are those called like a tooth saw and you kind of started bending it and it got all warbly something kind of like that like some kind of weird like otherworldly warble um yeah i mean that that sound is something that was kind of described by you know we had two teachers uh, as gunslingers, we had Court, who was responsible for all of our physical training. Uh, and then we had Vanet, who was in charge of all of our mental training. Uh, and and they did talk about, they're the one who, you know, would tell towers, would tell stories about the Dark Tower. Um, and I think he also at one point did talk about uh, places where reality was thin um, and that weird phenomenons like, what we just experienced time moving weird distance moving weird. Um, that that's the place where those kind of things happen. And so it would make sense if, if hearing the sound, I think would bring up that memory of Van a, uh, of Van a, you know, talking about, uh, what I think he called the thinny. What do you do after, after this experience? Um, I think after hearing it, I don't want to get too close to it, especially in the dark. Um, because they are, you know, what little I know of it, it's kind of unstable and dangerous. Uh, so I will head back to camp. I've got a heart that's as big as a full winter moon. I've got a heart Casting shadow across the room. All right, Cuthbert and Alain, how's it going over there? How are them beans coming? We got we got beans. I feel like we got beans. Is this going to be my role in this in this series? <laughs> I'm just going to do a lot of bean talk. <laughs> yeah, just every other sentence has got to be, we got beans. We'll have coffee in the morning, which will be a whole other, like, bean situation. Mm, mm, hot bean water. But, yeah, we're... I'm I, I'm, I'm, very worried. I, As a neurotic person, I'm very worried. Roland has been gone too long. And now I'm, like, standing up, and I'm going to be like, I'm looking for I'm going to go look for him. You're I know just... I got lost looking for water, but I'm going to go look for him. He'll be back soon. He probably just... I don't know, met a girl out in the woods or something. <laughs> Steve, that's ridiculous. There's not anyone here for miles, Bert. Can you please take this seriously for once? I know. I, no. I'm, wor- I'm worried. I'm worried. We were sent out here by st- the the boss. His we dad. were what is, sent we out call here it? Hey, hey, hey. to get t- t- out of their hair. Time out, time out, time out, time out. Do we call him the king? Like, what do we call him? I have no idea. I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah. What? What? What we do you think? Call, we don't call him, call him Steve. Like, you know. Yeah, no, you don't call him Steve. I probably definitely call him Steve. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> king Stephen. King, comma Stephen. I don't know. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just say his name with, with, with deference. I was like, we were sent out here by Stephen Deshane to watch over Roland. We're, that's what I'm gonna do. That's my job out here. Also, counting. I can't wait for the counting bird. I'm gonna be honest. That surprises me not at all. Yeah, I brought an abacus. Listen, if it makes you feel any better, I will finish my bowl of beans. And we'll go out and look for him. No, I'm leaving now. Finish your bowl of beans. I don't need you. It's fine. <sighs> okay. And as you say that, you you hear uh, you hear um, <laughs> hoof hoof. 
You hear a, you hear a horse approaching. I don't know. Hoof, <laughs> like it's hoof not beats. So sad. Hoof beats. <laughs> hoof paws. You hear hoof noise. Hoof prince. <laughs> yeah. I don't. Hoof falls. You hear yes. someone hoofing it. <laughs> Clap. Hear... Clappity clips. Clippity clops. Yep, you hear that. All of that. You hear that. There's a horse a coming. There's a horse a coming. <laughs> Oh shit! Like people aren't going to be able to tell if that was Pine Hill Haynes or Alex. You hear that, Elaine? It's, that's it's pr- that's probably Roland right now. It is indeed Roland right now. Uh, and I ah, uh, where were you? I met a girl in the woods. <laughs> Called it. Called it. You, you too, Roland. What I did? <laughs> oh. So, she, how homely was she from a scale of one to ten? Jesus, Elaine. <laughs> yeah, just, just, just what doing. What's wrong with you? I'm just doing a little intel. I just that is know really, like, how, that's, that's low for me. What level of, I mean, like, you didn't, like, talk to her or anything, right? Because we are supposed to be, you know, like... Under you know under the under the, but we don't have we we don't have radar but you know whatever it would be instead you know under the watch you know. Well, it was. I discovered it was Pat Delgado's daughter. Oh, okay. So this was, this was all business. All right, yeah. <laughs> just like my Roland. I mean our Roland. But I think even more than that, before we head into town in the morning, because I did discover that town is. Just a few hours away, somehow. So we made really good time, then. I don't think so. You remember when Van A used to talk about the thinny? And I think I'm specifically looking at Alen. (laughs) (laughs) Is that what I felt? Yeah, I think we've got a stop to make on the way into town tomorrow. Because I think there's one here. Oh, Alain is like, ooh, uh, thinnies. <laughs> uh, creep me out. I look on the bright side, Alain. Cut two days off her travel. I'm just counting stars in the ring around the moon.